Kachin is a good-for-nothing useless orphan boy who gets a divine weapon and awakens his god powers. 100 years ago, the demon king, Wo Sun, led an army of monsters to attack the realm of the gods. The god of war, Shu Tian, who's the guardian of the western temple, fights alone against the whole demon army and kicks a bunch of demon butts. But just when things start looking good for the gods, the celestial demon betrays and stabs Shu Tian in the back. His spirit breaks into 72 pieces and scatters all over the mortal world. With Shu Tian gone, the demons took control of the war. As a result, the god Shijia decides to seal both gods and demons in the void realm using all his power, which means the gods lose their Buddhist protection. This messes things up in the six realms and makes people suffer. To fix this, they need Shu Tian's power to break the seal and save the gods, bringing back Buddhism. In the present, in a desert, there's a little house shaking from the strong winds. Inside, there are two brothers, Jen and Kachin. Jen, the older one, tells Kachin to shut up because their father will protect them. The wind gets worse, and Jen puts his deadweight brother in a basket. They rush out of the cabin right before it falls because of a landslide. Outside, we see their father with a staff fighting a demon armed with a chain and a big rock. They're going at it hard, but the demon smacks the man, sending him flying into a rock. Jen shows up with his two pathetic two wooden swords to help his father, but the demon tries to hit him. Their father acts fast, blocking the demon's attack with his staff. He scolds his stupid son for not going to the cave, like he was supposed to, and skillfully uses his staff to toss his two boys to safety on a nearby mountain. The father keeps fighting the demon, turning his staff into nunchakas, and wrapping the demon's arm with them. He knocks the demon off balance, knees its face, and tries to strangle it with the chains. The demon is strong and breaks free, sending the shattered chains flying. The father kicks the pieces of his broken weapon and turns them into projectiles. With an incantation, he surrounds the demon with these shards and recites a mantra to seal the demon. A mysterious electrical energy comes from the pieces of the broken weapon and holds the demon's arms and neck. Then, the mountains around them turn into giant fingers and trap the demon under a pile of rocks. After all the action, the father meets up with his useless kids. He tells them they must run because the seal can only keep that demon locked up for a little bit. Jen is confused, so his father explains that the demon they're dealing with is called Asura, and it's a demon that goes after demon hunters. They go to a place that looks like a giant tree with paths made from its branches. His father jumps down and tells them to follow. When they get to a weird cave that's like an underground temple, his father unlocks some special seal, and a door opens. Then, some roots move away, and they find two swords stuck in a monument. The father asks Jen to hold one of the swords while the father holds the other, as they both touch them. The swords turn all shiny and golden. They take the swords out, and a little golden box comes up from the ground. The father says this box is super important. He explains that it's meant for his little useless brother when he grows up so Jen should give it to the brother then. His father then gives him the other sword and says these are special demon hunter swords that have been handed down for generations. Jen feels like he doesn't deserve it yet. His father tells him that he's still trash but he's been learning about swords since he was little. If he doesn't become a great demon hunter, the father will beat him in the afterlife. Suddenly, there's a big shake, and they figure out that the demon got loose from its seal. The losers dash through a tunnel, and there are some symbols lighting up on the walls. Their father says these symbols are like magic shields to keep demons out. They get to a bridge over a lake of lava, and their father tells them it's the spirit house for demon hunters. Jen asks if those barrier charms can stop the demon Asura, but his father says they can't stop it, just keep it trapped. Jen's kind of confused, but then, the demon smashes through the ceiling and slams his father to the ground. The father uses his magic and shoots these glowing lights at the demon, distracting it. Then, he does another spell that traps the demon in a light sphere, and it falls into the lava. The kids are scared for their father, but when the smoke clears, he's okay. They hear a bell and a lady's hand goes right through their father's chest, which really freaks them out. The father is all confused about how that demon got through the barrier, and she tells him she was already here, but he couldn't see her. He falls to his knees due to the injury. When he sees his pathetic kids, he decides to save them with his last bit of strength. He tells Jen to protect his brother, and he casts a big spell. It makes a light shield around the kids. The demon doesn't want them to get away, so she attacks the shield and scratches Jen's cheek. But she can't hurt them, and the spell teleports them to safety. Their father is happy he saved them and tells them to save the world. A few years later, we find Jen chilling on a tree branch, waiting for Kachin, who's trying to put on a lizard costume. Meanwhile, there are two guys, an old scared man, 
and a young monk going into a haunted house. The old man asks the monk for help to get rid of a demon in the house. The monk sprinkles some weird magic powder and sees lizard footprints on the wall. He figures out it's a super old gecko demon and tells the old guy to run away. But when he tries to exorcise the demon, a voice in the shadows starts laughing and asks why he's pretending. The monk isn't having it and starts chanting and tossing his prayer beads at the demon. The demon gecko shows up, and the monk accidentally beheads it with his staff, which wasn't supposed to happen. The headless lizard starts talking, freaking the pathetic monk out. He backs up and bumps into Zhen, who knocks him out with one punch. When the stupid monk wakes up, he finds both brothers standing in front of him, and he's tied to a pillar. They show him the lizard costume and the man tries to act grateful for them taking down the demon. But Jen warns him to spill the truth or face some consequences. The monk confesses that he faked being a demon hunter and teamed up with the lizard demon to make lots of money. They tricked the people in the village, did fake exorcisms, and split the cash. After this confession, he says his whole scam relies on looks. He says he's so good looking that people would believe anything he said. They would even believe if he claimed to be Buddha. But Jen will be seen as a pathetic bandit and not a demon hunter. Jen doesn't like that comment and makes him eat his words. Later, we see the monk wearing the lizard costume's head, with a reptile tail belonging to the demon gecko, wiggling on the ground. In the morning, the brothers have a special ceremony to make catch in a man since he's turned 14. Jen sprinkles golden powder on him and activates talismans to give Kachin the power to fight evil, officially making him a demon hunter. Jen asks how Kachin feels, but he says he doesn't feel worthy of the title and power. His brother encourages him and gives him the box their dad left. Kachin opens it and finds a small metal rod with engravings on the end. He's a bit disappointed, but Jen doesn't know what it's for either, only that their dad said it was Kachin's destiny. Still, Kachin appreciates it as a gift from their father. Out of the blue, an old guy comes running, desperately needing demon hunters. He says his town's in trouble because there's this weird mist that makes people vanish. Folks think it's a demon cat causing the problem, and he's got a bag of coins to beg for their help. When Kachin asks Jen if they should take the job, Jen thinks it might be another trick. Plus, they haven't sorted out the important stuff about Kachin's coming-of-age ceremony, like finding him a master to teach him how to be a man. As they walk away, Jen bumps into the old guy, and the bag of coins spills, making a little bell roll out. Jen remembers that the lady demon who deleted their dad had that bell. Jen grabs the old man's arm and asks where the bell came from. Then they head to the village, and at the entrance, there's this thick fog. The old man says people who go in vanish, but the brothers don't care and go in anyway. The deeper they go, the harder it is to see because of the fog. Kachin complains, but Jen says it means they're close to their target. But then he looks back, and Kachin's gone. A girl's voice asks Jen who he's searching for. He tells her to spill the beans about the bell's origin, promising not to hurt her if she leaves the town. But instead, she attacks him like crazy, and he dodges it all. She turns out to be a cat girl demon and tries to scratch him, getting his back. Jen gets serious and starts a spinning attack that clears the fog and knocks her down. She's scared and says she was just hunting for food, and the missing people got lost, not hurt. After trying to trick Jen by seducing him, Jen asks the demon if she knows where the bell came from. She claims to have found it by chance and has no idea where it came from. Jen decides to let her go, but she takes advantage of his kindness and launches a surprise attack from behind. However, Jen sees through her plan and quickly slashes her with his sword. The demon girl starts fading away and warns Jen that her brother will avenge her by killing Kachin, leaving Jen worried. On the other hand, Kachin faces a male cat demon who sends him flying with an attack. The demon is disappointed, thinking that demon hunters would be stronger, but instead, he finds only a mere stupid and weak child. Kachin gets furious when he hears this and grabs a stick from the ground to challenge the demon. Jen watches from a water tower, seeing this as Kachin's final test before graduating. The cat demon launches several attacks, but Kachin blocks them with his improvised rod. The demon tells him it's pointless to fight because his sister has probably deleted Jen. Kachin knows his brother is also a loser, but he won't be defeated. He manages to land a couple of attacks on the demon, making it angry. The demon increases its speed, delivers a few cuts, and breaks Kachin's stick. Jen gets ready to intervene, but Kachin notices the useless object his father gave him. It glows, elongates, and turns into a golden staff, awakening his true powers. He uses it like a spear to impale the demon. The staff sends out a magical wave throughout the universe, catching the attention of various individuals familiar with the legend of the god of war. The cat demon is still alive even though he got hurt badly. Kachin is hurt too, but he's unconscious and doesn't know what's happening. 
The cat demon is scared that Kachin will hurt him when he wakes up, so he tries to pull the staff from his chest. But then, Jen comes to help. Jen has his swords out and wants to know where the bell came from. The cat demon doesn't want to tell, so Jen threatens to hurt him unless he spills the beans. Jen makes the bell ring a little, and it scares the cat demon. Suddenly, the cat demon starts talking and says a lady demon gave him the bell. She told him that when the bell rang, two brothers would appear. After the cat demon hears the bell sound again, he goes into a trance. Jen uses this opportunity to ask the cat demon who the demon lady is, but the cat demon says demons can't know her identity. The cat demon says he was told to delete demon hunters and get the spirit fragments. When the cat demon finishes telling the truth, the bell goes crazy and flies into his mouth, making him blow up. Jen tries to protect Kachin from getting hurt in the explosion. While all of this is happening, two celestials watch from a screen. There's a young man and a young girl. The girl immediately turns her arm into a cannon, and they teleport away from their huge spaceship to the Earth realm. When Kachin wakes up, Jen tells him he did a pathetic job in the fight and then tells him to get his new evolved weapon. While Kachin goes to get it, Jen thinks about what the cat demon said about the spirit fragments. He doesn't know what it is, but he's curious about how it's connected to their father's killer. As Kachin picks up the staff, it returns to its original tiny size. He shows it to Jen, who just laughs because they don't know how to make it bigger like before. But their moment is interrupted by the two celestials from earlier. They notice the girl wearing a pig mask. The girl asks her companion about the chances of the staff being what they're looking for. Through his screen, he analyzes the brothers and the small staff in Kachin's hands, confirming it's what they're looking for, so they approach the brothers. Jen, though badly injured from the previous explosion, tries to defend his brother but can't. Kachin attempts to introduce themselves, saying they're demon hunters hired by the village chief to eliminate the demons in the village. The girl then commands Kachin to give them the staff he's holding. Seeing the stranger's intentions, Jen says that if they want the staff, they'll have to go through him. He quickly attacks the girl with his sword, but she manages to knock him down by hitting him with her cannon. Kachin rushes to his brother to check on him, and the girl threatens to shoot them if they don't hand over the staff. The two brothers are not scared at all. Jen starts arguing with the girl, calling her a pig head, which makes her very mad. But the young man steps in and stops the fight. He says they don't want to hurt anyone and uses a spell from his screen pad to heal Jen's wounds. With Jen feeling better, he asks who they are and why they want to steal his brother's staff. The girl explains that the staff, known as Shenzhen Iron, has always belonged to them. It was the weapon of the god of war, Xu Tian, who was the toughest warrior among the gods. The strangers introduce themselves as celestial messengers from the fairy clan. The boy is Sha Lu, and the girl is Xiao Ba. When she takes off her mask, the brothers tell her how cute she is, and she blushes. They ask the weirdos to explain more about what's going on. Sha tells them the story of the fall of the god of war and the legend that they need to find 72 pieces of his spirit to unlock the seal of the void realm and release the gods. The divine staff is the key because it can sense the spirit fragments. Jen thinks this might be connected to what the cat demon told him, and he hopes that by getting these spirit fragments, they can find their father's killer. So, he doesn't want his brother to give them the staff. Jen tries to learn more about the stranger's plans and asks them how they're so sure this is the divine staff. Shaw explains that the celestial book says the divine staff is one of the weapons made by the god of creation. When it awakens, it gives off a strong energy that can spread through the six realms, and that's how they found it. This surprises Kachin, and Shaw says it's not just the god sealed in the void realm. The demon king Wo Sun and his demon army are there too. The followers of the Demon King can feel the energy too. Jen is still unsure if they can trust these weirdos, with the world being chaotic and dangerous. He tells them that no one can be trusted these days. This makes Zhao Ba mad, and she points her weapon at them, saying they're determined to take the staff, whether Jen believes them or not. But her friend stops her. Zhao Ba continues, saying that if they can't revive the god of war and open the seal of the gods, the world will stay in chaos. If the demons get to it first and unleash the demon army, It'll be the end of the world. Kachin asks if giving her the staff will save the world, and she promises that if they find all the fragments and revive the god of war, peace will return to the six realms. So, Kachin trusts her and hands over the staff. Zhao Ba transforms her cannon back to her arm, showing there's no more threat, and says it's a promise. Kachin feels sad to give away the staff, which was their father's gift. But Jen reassures him, saying their father would support his choice. Jen thinks giving up the divine staff means losing the trail of the demon lady, but he doesn't want his brother in danger. He suggests they go see the village chief for their reward and a party for Kachin. As they're about to leave, Zhao Ba is angry because the staff is fake. 
catch and takes it back from her, and it turns into a golden staff again. This surprises her because it turns to iron whenever she holds it. Shaw explains that the staff has been asleep for 100 years, and only someone with a pure heart can awaken it. In short, she belongs to the streets. It seems to have chosen Kachin as its new owner. The pathetic Xiao Ba then declares that the brothers will go with them, since, if the staff picks an owner, no one else can use it unless the original owner is no more. Jen is thrilled that it seems like fate is on their side, and that's how their journey starts with the two celestial beings. After they get their reward for saving the village, they all hop on a ship summoned by Shaw, which completely amazes the brothers when they see it. On the ship, the two brothers are feasting and eating all the meat they are given. This makes our stupid Zhao Ba mad because they're eating like they haven't had food in years. Jen teases her, saying he'll get skinny like her if he doesn't eat. He continues teasing her by not letting her have the last piece of meat. But then, the ship's warning system tells them about an obstacle they need to avoid. The ship swerves to miss it and they almost hit a woman lying in the middle of the desert. Jen goes to check, and he sees a woman on the ground. When he gets closer, he sees she's really hurt and bleeding from her stomach. He gets ready to bring her on the ship, but Zhao Ba doesn't want some unknown person on board. Jen, being a demon hunter, can't leave an injured person behind. He even wonders if Zhao Ba is jealous because the lady has a better figure than her. This leaves Zhao Ba kind of speechless, and she asks if Jen doesn't find it strange that the lady is alone in the middle of the desert. They have a little argument, but they finally decide to help the woman. Later, the woman thanks them for their help, but Zhao Ba tells her that if she's fine, she should leave. As usual, Jen and Zhao Ba start arguing, while Kachin gives the woman a glass of water. Shaw asks her how she got hurt, and she tells them that she ran into bandits the previous day who tried to attack her. When she tried to escape, they stabbed her in the stomach. She hid until they left, and now she's scared to run into them again. Jen gets mad and wants to go kill the bandits right away, but Zhao Ba reminds him that if he leaves the ship, he can't come back, so he lets it go since the lady is safe now. The woman asks where they're going and if they could take her to the Dark Canyon. Jen says it's a big coincidence because they're going there to look for the God of War's spiritual fragments. She doesn't quite understand, so Kachin explains that they're searching for these fragments, although they're not sure what they look like. He shows her the Divine Staff and tells her how it sensed a fragment in the Dark Canyon. This gets her interested, but Zhao Ba quickly grabs Kachin's hands, telling him to hide the staff from the woman because it's not her business. Then, Shaw says it's late, and they should rest and head to the dark canyon in the morning. After the celestial beings leave, Jen asks the woman for her name, and she says it's Zhe Later, the two brothers and Zhe are asleep in the same room. She wakes up and tries to use a web-like thread from a ring to grab the staff from Kachin's neck, but it falls onto Kachin's hair. He brushes off the web and it lands on Jen who smiles but doesn't wake up. This alarms Zing, who wonders what kind of dream they're having. Before she can try again, the door opens, and she pretends to be asleep as Shaw enters. The next morning, Jen and Kachin walked out of their room. Jen was all excited about a dream he had where he fought monsters, but Zhao Ba yelled at him to keep shut. That's when they noticed that their new friend Zing wasn't with them. Jen asked where she was, and Shaw said she wasn't there when they woke up. Jen was worried that she might run into the bandits again and felt he should have gone with her. Kachin got even more scared because he realized he didn't have his divine staff. Meanwhile, Zing had gone into a forest that led to the Dark Canyon. Going back a bit in time, she found herself in a cave surrounded by two demons and some bandits. Up on a throne at the end of some stairs, the demon boss sat with his right-hand man who is also a demon. Above them, Zing's sister, Zai Yun, was hanging from the ceiling, and it seemed like the demons had kidnapped her. The second demon grabbed her sister's face and said that the celestial messengers had found the divine staff and were coming. They needed Zing, who is the world's best thief to steal the divine staff from the celestials. Zing's sister begged her not to do it, but Zing thought the staff might just be a legend because no one had found it for 100 years. The demon boss corrected her and showed her a spirit fragment from the god of war, which sensed the staff awakening. He made some rocks float and the cave shakes to show the power of the spirit piece. He said the divine staff was the most powerful weapon ever, and if he got it along with the spirit fragment, he'd rule over all demons. Zing was scared by the power and what would happen if she disobeyed him. She asked if they'd set her and her sister free when they got the staff. The leader just laughed promising to give her sister back once he had the staff. Zai Yin begged her not to do it and reminded her about a promise never to steal again. This made Zing think. But the demon next to her sister said they'd hurt her if she didn't go. That made Zing angry, 
and she told the leader she'd bring him the staff, even if it meant she'd have to fight. Back in the present, Ziying held the divine staff close to her heart, ready to go save her sister from the dark canyon. Meanwhile, Zhen and Kachin find themselves in a bit of trouble as Zhao Ba is really upset with them for saving someone who turned out to be a liar. They even lost the divine staff, which makes her even angrier. Zhen says sorry for not realizing Ziying was a liar, but Zhao Ba keeps scolding them, saying that Zhen fell for her charm. Sha tries to make peace and asks everyone to stay calm, but Zhao Ba tells him to focus on driving the ship while she teaches the two brothers a lesson. After a while, Sha stops the ship, saying it smells like gunpowder and he needs some fresh air. He then mentions that he's found Ziying and the staff, which surprises everyone. As they continue their journey, Kachin asks where they're going. Sha answers that they're headed to a place called the Spiderweb Cave. He explains that it's tricky to navigate, just like spiderwebs, and it's easy to get lost there. When they reach the cave's entrance, Sha uses his tablet to show the signal of the Divine Staff and the Spirit Fragment. This motivates Zhen, who is determined to retrieve them right away. Inside the cave, the demon boss and his second are getting ready for an exchange. Ziying tosses the staff to the demon boss and is reunited with her sister, Zai Yan. Zai Yan apologizes for going to the Dark Canyon alone, which led to her capture and Ziying being blackmailed into stealing. Ziying reassures her sister and promises to do whatever it takes to protect her, even if it means enduring the curse of stealing for a long time. As they try to leave, the second demon blocks their path. The demon boss tells Ziying that her leaving wasn't part of the deal. Ziying attacks him with her web thread, but he dodges it. However, the thread loops around his leg, making him fall and toss the staff into the air, which Ziying catches. The second demon rushes at Ziying, but she uses the staff and tries to make it extend. The demon gets scared, but nothing happens. After a tense moment, she shoots the thread at the demon's face, blinding him briefly. The two sisters take this chance to run, but Zai Yan stumbles and falls. Even though her sister tells her to go without her, Ziying stays to protect her. As the demons get closer, Ziying shoots another web, but the leader cuts it with his sword and tries to attack. Ziying manages to push her sister out of harm's way just in time, narrowly avoiding the attack. Zai Yan is scared but tries to fight back against the other demon though she's too weak. Meanwhile, Ziying keeps fighting with the demon boss. She uses her web to trap the demon who is about to harm her sister against a wall. The demon boss tells her to stay focused and keeps attacking her. She tries to dodge his moves and use her web powers, but he surprises her with a rock spell that knocks her down. Ziyun is really scared and goes to check on her sister. Ziying tells her to run and escape, but the second demon breaks free from the webs and traps the girls with a special barrier, thanks to the spirit fragment's power. Ziying is surprised that the second demon also possesses a fragment. Outside the cave, Sha tells the group that he can follow the staff's trail since the cave is too complex to find the best path. Jen suggests splitting up and asks Kachin to join him. Zhao Ba warns them not to be fooled again as they leave. Deep in the cave, Kachin starts to worry because all the paths look the same. Jen reassures Kachin, saying he can smell Ziying's unique scent in one of the passageways. They eventually reach a more open area and overhear Ziying trying to negotiate with the demons. She offers to give them the staff in exchange for letting them go, but the demons refuse. They want both sisters and the staff. Ziying's stomach starts bleeding, and her sister is worried. Ziyan pleads with the demons to spare them, promising to do what they ask. The demon boss accepts, promising not to harm them if they cooperate. The brothers watch from their hiding spot, and even though Kachin wants to help, Jen tells him to wait for the right moment. Then, the demons deactivate the barrier, and things almost take a dark turn. But Ziying pushes her sister away and scratches the demon's face with her web. The demon boss gets furious and tries to hurt Ziying with a rock spell, but Zai Yan steps in to protect her and gets seriously hurt. She apologizes to her sister for all the trouble she caused before giving up the ghost, causing Ziying to scream in sorrow. Jen gets angry and attacks the demons with his swords. The leader manages to summon a big sword to block Jen's attack. Jen tells Ziying to get to safety, while Kachin tries to attack the second demon from behind but fails and is thrown to the ground. Suddenly, there's a huge explosion that surprises everyone. Zhao Ba and Sha entered the cave by blasting a hole with Zhao Ba's arm cannon. The demons didn't expect them to arrive so quickly. Zhao Ba tries to shoot at Ziying, but Jen intercepts the shot, causing it to explode the cave ceiling. Zhao Ba gets mad and tries to attack again, but Kachin stops her and tries to calm her down. 
catch and tells her there's something they don't know about Z, but Zhao Ba thinks they've both lost their minds. She then notices the two demons protected by a magical barrier. Sha figures out the demons are using the God of War's spirit fragment. The leader taunts the group, saying their cannon isn't enough to defeat them. Zhao Ba tells him not to be too confident as she prepares to shoot, while Zhen tells Zhang to take her sister and leave. He also asks Kachin to help her. The second demon tries to stop them, but Zhen threatens to end him if he takes another step, which stops him. The demon realizes Zhen's swords are demon-slaying swords. The leader calls his henchmen, who surround the group. Zhao Ba isn't scared at all. She taunts the leader and calls him weak. This really angers the leader, who orders his henchmen to attack. Without breaking a sweat, Zhao Ba asks Sha to take care of them. Sha uses his tablet to summon a big wind tornado, sending many bandits flying out of the cave. This surprises the demons, and only the two of them are left from their group. They're amazed at the celestial being's power. Jen tells his brother to take the girls and get out of there, but the leader isn't going to let them escape so easily. He attacks with a barrage of rock spikes, but Sha's tornado spell lifts Ziying and Kachin off the ground, saving them. The demon boss tries a powerful attack with his sword, but Jen blocks it with his swords. The second demon throws a dagger, but Zhao Ba's cannon spikes deflect it. She then hits the demon boss while Sha creates a storm with a thunderbolt spell through the hole in the ceiling. The second demon tries to put up his barrier, but Zhao Ba prevents it by sending him flying into the storm, while Sha uses the thunderbolt spell to hit the demon boss. Afterward, Sha tells the brothers that it's their turn to handle the fight and instructs them to help the girls. Zhen carries Zai Yan in his arms, and Kachin assists Zi, who is badly hurt, and apologizes for deceiving them along the way. Kachin reassures her that it's okay and Ziying returns the staff to him. Suddenly, the demon boss comes after Sha and tries to strike Sha, but he evades the attack and conjures a fire spell with his tablet. The demon quickly creates a rock wall to deflect the fire back at Sha. Taking advantage of the flames, he tries a surprise attack, but Zhao Ba shields Sha with her cannon and pushes the demon back. The demon warns them they still have time to escape, but Zhao Ba isn't scared and even mocks him, making him furious. He starts causing rocks to float and the cave to tremble. Sha warns them to be careful because, despite the demon being weak, he still has a spirit fragment that's quite powerful. The demon sends floating rocks as projectiles, and Sha tries to shield them with a water wall, but the rocks pierce the liquid. They must jump back, and Zhao Ba unleashes a powerful energy wave with her cannon. The demon tries to stop it, but the laser splits into several beams, and he barely creates a rock dome in time to shield himself. The demon brags that if he has rocks, they can't touch him because he can always shield himself. Unfortunately, he's standing in a pool of water, and Sha casts another lightning spell, electrocuting the water. Zhao Ba finishes the battle with a powerful shot that reduces the demon to ashes and releases the spirit fragment from his body. After taking the fragment, they rush out of the collapsing cave. Outside the cave, the two brothers have carried the two ladies to safety. Ziying thanks them for their help, and Zhen tells her that his sister still has a chance, and they can save her life with the right care. But surprise, the second demon jumps out from behind some bushes, trying to hurt Zhen. Luckily, Kachin tackles the demon to the ground just in time. The demon gets up and tries to harm Kachin with his dagger, but Jen steps in to protect his brother. The demon challenges Jen to a duel to see whose swords are faster. During the fight, the demon moves fast, making it seem like he has many arms, and he's quicker than Jen. He even cuts Jen a bit, and because of the bleeding, Jen's vision starts getting fuzzy. To help Jen, Kachin rushes at the demon to hold him in place so Jen can hit him. But the demon starts hitting Kachin. When Jen tries to help, the demon puts up a barrier to trap him and kicks Kachin away. This makes Jen very angry, and he starts trying to break the barrier. Then, the demon notices Jen's special swords, but is distracted when Ziying tries to help by using her web on the demon. Sadly, the demon easily cuts through the web. Since she's still weak, the demon focuses on Jen again, using a spell to slowly turn him into a statue by turning his arms and legs into stone. While this is happening, Jen tells Kachin to escape with the girls and that he'll catch up later. But Kachin won't leave him and starts punching the barrier, hurting his hands. Seeing Kachin like this, the demon sends him flying and taunts Jen, saying he should say his last words. Kachin feels helpless and cries because he always needs someone to protect him. But Jen reminds him that he defeated the cat demon and that he'll become a great demon hunter someday. Suddenly, the staff hanging from Kachin's neck starts to glow with a golden light, and his eyes change color too. With a powerful attack, he smashes the barrier with the staff. He's sent flying by the force and is also kicked by the demon who tries to take the staff. 
but when the demon touches it, the staff turns small and metal again. Jen petrification is slowly wearing off as he goes to meet a wounded Kachin, who says he's relieved to have helped him break free from the barrier before passing out from exhaustion. The demon is confused about the staff's change and tries to make it big again with different phrases, but it doesn't work. Not paying attention to the fight, Jen is able to slice the demon's arm off, and the demon screams in pain as he tries to use his super speed to defend himself. But this time Jen is even faster. The demon suddenly sees a flash of a white-haired man with the same swords. With a quick cut, Jen brings the demon to his knees. The demon reveals he's a human and says demon hunters can't kill humans. But Jen says the demon's bad actions don't follow the rules. The demon says Jen reminds him of the former master of the dual sword user. The demon reveals that over 12 years ago, a mysterious lady ordered him to capture the dual sword demon hunter, and he faced that hunter but clearly lost. Surprisingly, the demon hunter let him go, and after talking to that woman, he asked her to never forgive the swordsman. He wonders if that warrior still regrets letting him go. Jen, with his sword at the man's throat, asks about the mysterious woman, but the demon only says it's destiny. Then, a bell rings, and the demon falls dead, releasing another spirit fragment. That night, back on the ship, Shaw tries to heal Zayin. But despite his efforts, he tells Ziying that her sister's injuries are too severe for celestial magic's healing. Kachin is deeply upset and runs out in tears. Ziying regrets that she couldn't save her sister, but Shaw says there's another way. They conceal her sister's spirit and use the god's power to heal it later. They need to separate her spirit from her body and she'll be resurrected in another body when the time comes. Ziying agrees, and Sha puts her sister's spirit in Ziying's ring. Outside, Kachin wonders why the staff chose him. Jen appears and returns the staff, saying Kachin has untapped potential. He asks Kachin to believe in himself and explains they can save Ziying's sister with a spell if they find all the spirit fragments and save the gods. Kachin is motivated and rushes back to the ship after Zhao Ba calls him. Left alone, Jen thinks about the demon's words about the previous dual sword user. Inside the ship, the Celestials give Kachin the spirit fragments they've found, which the Divine Staff absorbs. Zhao Ba warns Kachin not to lose it again. Jen arrives, and it's time to continue their journey. Ziying wants to go with them and believes she can help. Jen gladly accepts her to the team, despite Zhao Ba's usual negative reaction. She ends up accompanying them on their journey. The next day, they arrive in a new city, full of factories. Kachin has a fever and can't stop coughing due to the extreme heat. Jen asks if Shaw has any spells to cool him down, and Shaw explains that the staff has absorbed two spirit fragments at once, which is tough for Kachin. But when they reach the Earth God's shop, they'll give him special medicine, and he'll be fine after that. Ziying steps out of the ship in lighter clothing because of the heat. Zhao Ba gets jealous and angry because she thinks Ziying looks seductive, but Kachin doesn't mind it. They walk through the streets and find the shop they're looking for. Jen is surprised because it doesn't look like an Earth God's shop, it's more like a clothing store. He's not sure if they'll find medicine there, but Shaw suggests they check it out. Inside, Zhao Ba yells to get the shopkeeper's attention. He's a strange old man who quickly notices their celestials. After a bit of confusion and a punch from Zhao Ba, because he was checking out Zayin, the shopkeeper takes them seriously. He explains that due to the chaos in the celestial realms, Fewer celestial customers came to his shop, so he started selling mortal products to survive. He presses a button, and the shop transforms into a medicine shop. Zhao Ba quickly orders some magical beans called Senzu beans, which she gives to Kachin to relieve his pain. Jen is impressed and wants to buy some too, but he's disappointed when he finds out they cost two celestial coins, which is a two billion in human money. Shaw offers to pay for them and transfers the money using his tablet. Zhao Ba asks the old man about the industrial furnace in the Fire City. He tells them that 100 years ago, a huge fire meteorite fell into the furnace and changed the climate. The meteorite burned for 300 days and became the new furnace, now controlled by a flame demon called Fire Evil Cloud. Zhao Ba gets mad because she doesn't understand why a celestial would follow a demon. The old man explains that who is a powerful demon who controls fire, and nobody dares to challenge him. Shaw asks Kachin if he's feeling better and tells him to spin the divine staff. Kachin starts spinning it, and it causes a reaction from the meteorite. Shaw thinks a fragment of the God of War's spirit is there, which the fire demons are using to get stronger. Jen wonders if that mysterious person he heard about might be there, but Kachin breaks the tension as he drops the staff because his necklace broke. The Celestials decide to go for the fragment, and Jen insists on coming along. Zhao Ba warns them that they'll be facing a very strong demon with powerful magic, unlike the ones they fought before. Jen still wants to go, 
and Kachin would rather go too but Jen asks him to stay while Ziying takes care of him. Meanwhile, inside one of the facilities, a female secretary tells the flame demon that the core is safe. He thinks things are about to get interesting. Sha, Jen, and Zhao Ba reach the gate of the Great Flame Building, and Sha shows them the blueprints, indicating that the flame demon they're looking for is at the top. There are many guards on each floor, so getting up there will take some time. Sha begins to explain a way to avoid a fight and save energy, but before he can finish, Jen cuts through a wall with his sword and enters the building, which surprises Sha and Zhao Ba. The corridor quickly fills with armed guards. While at the shop, Zing takes care of Kachin, who's sick and having bad dreams. She cools him with a wet cloth, and in his dream, the two spirit fragments and the divine staff turn into spirits and make a yin-yang sign. Then, the dream shifts to an old war between gods and demons. The god of war fights them but gets betrayed, after which Kachin senses the demon souls and the spirit fragments, and they try to convince him to use the spirit fragment to get power for himself by giving up his soul. Kachin thinks about it and admits he's weak but decides he wants power not to be stronger than others, but to protect his loved ones. He doesn't want to become evil. The divine staff glows because he passed the temptation test. The god of war promises to help him with the staff and unite their spirits as well. Kachin wakes up and sees Zing taking care of him, making him a bit nervous. He moves away, and the staff falls from his pocket. Before he can pick it up, Zing takes it and goes to talk to the shopkeeper. She returns and gives Kachin back the staff, now with a new necklace made from her family's silver spider thread, which won't break. Kachin is grateful for the gift. Back to the battle at the Great Flame Building. Sha, Jen, and Zhao Ba have defeated the guards and entered a grand hall. The place is filled with paintings of beautiful women on the walls which Jen admires. The flame demon appears on the stairs and agrees with Jen about the woman's beauty. Jen asks if he's who, but the man says he's not after a demon hunter and tells Jen to step back. Jen lunges at him, but who uses a fire attack, forcing Jen to step back to avoid getting burned? Who explains that he's been waiting for 100 years for the two celestials and announces the start of the main play, challenging them to take the divine spirit fragment from him. Jen attacks Hu, but Hu creates a fiery wall to block him. Zhao Ba urges Jen to move away, but Jen takes a hit from Hu. He uses his swords to protect himself. Hu then attacks even harder and defeats Jen, but suddenly Sha steps in and uses a wind spell to catch Jen, preventing further harm. Sha warns Hu that the fiery power in his body could set off the flame meteorite that would harm the city. Sha suggests that if Hu gives up his plan, the meteorite can be cooled down completely. However, Hu reveals that he needs the blood of two celestial beings for a forbidden fire spell. Sha realizes Hu's intention is to create a forbidden jutsu with their blood and attack the celestial palace in space as an act of revenge. In response to this madness, Zhao Ba decides to confront Hu herself. She relentlessly fires her huge cannon at him. Unfortunately, her attacks are ineffective, as Hu protects himself with a force field and retaliates by attacking her cannon. Despite her efforts to defend herself, a fiery whip ensnares her weapon, heating it until it becomes useless. Just before it explodes, Zhao Ba asks Sha to cool it down, and he tries with a water spell. However, the water evaporates upon touching the fiery whip, who mocks her and says he expects to make her bleed a bit. Hearing this, Zhao Ba feels helpless. Jen interrupts and declares that he will confront Hu, even though he doesn't know the details of the forbidden fire spell. Since it requires the blood of immortals, he can't let Hu achieve his goal. Jen blocks a fireball aimed at Zhao Ba with his swords, as his swords can resist flames for a short time. Then, Jen tells Zhao Ba and Sha to leave and seek help from the elder in the store to come up with a better plan. Zhao Ba is frustrated but obeys Jen, and she and Sha quickly flee the scene. During the intense battle, the people living in the city begin to feel strange tremors and see flames shooting out from the top of the industrial furnace. Fear sets in as fiery projectiles start raining down from the sky. Ziying, Kachin, and the Elder witness this chaos. The Elder explains that the city's furnace has been reactivated because of the demon's fire. Kachin becomes increasingly worried, fearing something terrible might happen to Zhen. Inside the building, Zhen continues his fight against the demon, who keeps hurling fireballs at him. As a clever distraction, Jen throws one of his swords at the demon, but the demon effortlessly dodges it. However, Jen manages to land a hit from behind, thinking he has succeeded. But the demon tricks him by creating a copy of himself, catching Jen by the feet with a fiery whip and slamming him into the ground. The demon scolds Jen for sacrificing himself to protect the celestials who abandoned him. With a smile on his face, Jen tells the demon that he's not sacrificing himself for anyone. He just wants to be the one to defeat the demon. Despite several attempts to strike the demon, 
All of Jen's attacks are dodged. The demon takes a quick step forward and delivers a powerful punch to Jen's stomach, sending him flying and crashing against the wall. The demon remarks that it's absurd for Jen to think he could win with just his swords, but he respects Jen for enduring so long and suggests he deserves a fiery funeral. The demon prepares a powerful fire attack, but Sha and Zhao Ba save Jen just in time. Sha creates an ice wall to block the flames, but it doesn't last long as it begins to melt. Sha instructs Zhao Ba to take Jen, and at that moment, Sha receives a small cut on his neck. Unaware of the injury, he remains focused on rescuing his friends. After this, the three of them vanish from the scene amid the swirling dust and vapor. Alone in the room, the demon spots a couple of drops of blood on the floor. He decides to put his plan into action, an oath he made to the woman depicted in paintings, his wife. Using the blood, he draws a symbol on the floor, which conjures a magical pentagram. This triggers the city's furnace, setting the fire meteorite in motion as it begins to rise into the air. The Celestials see this and become terrified, realizing that the forbidden technique has been activated. Alongside the floating meteorite, the demon laughs menacingly. Zhao Ba insists they must stop him, but Sha reminds her that her cannon is overheated and useless. Additionally, in the mortal world, immortals like them can only use 50% of their power, making it impossible to confront the demon. However, she argues that if they don't stop him, the Immortal Palace will be in danger. Sha realizes that the Immortal Palace is not at risk because the demon is inadvertently using the forbidden technique in reverse. Due to the significant time that has passed since the meteorite fell, its composition has changed, making it unsuitable for activating the forbidden technique. Even if the demon manages to push it in the palace's direction, the meteorite will likely disintegrate due to overheating before reaching its destination. The most probable outcome is that the meteorite will break apart and fall back to the city as a smaller meteorite. This is precisely what happens, leaving the demon baffled as his plan fails. Sha and Zhao Ba decide to consult the elder from the store for a solution. The demon's failure infuriates him, and he vows to exterminate all the immortals. Meanwhile, in the city, panic sets in as people scramble to escape. Kachin and Ziying watch the chaos, worried about their companions, but Ziying comforts Kachin, assuring him that they will be okay. Suddenly, a fragment of meteorite nearly hits them. The elder urgently leads them to a shelter. Ziying grabs Kachin's hand, and they follow, but he goes back to help a little girl. They narrowly avoid getting crushed, and Ziying uses her webs to save them. They also spot the Celestials running toward them, carrying an unconscious Jen. Together, they head for the shelter, seeking safety from the falling meteorites. In the shelter, Kachin worries about his brother Jen, but the elder reassures him that Jen will be fine because he ate the senzu bean. However, Jen still needs time to recover from his injuries. Despite being in the shelter, the ongoing tremors continue to frighten the people. Ziying mentions that the shelter won't withstand much longer. Meanwhile, Sha ponders how the demon managed to control the meteorite for 100 years if its energy is highly unstable. The Elder mentions that the only treasure in the mortal world capable of withstanding a catastrophic level fire spell is the coolant core of the fire city's industrial furnace. In response, Zhao Ba urgently asks where it is located. However, despite being a sage of the earth with knowledge of magical and divine objects in the area, the Elder is unable to detect the core's presence due to an underground barrier set up by the demons from the Great Flame Fortress. This barrier is meant to prevent anyone from finding it. So, they brainstormed a plan to access the fortresses underground to obtain the coolant. However, the Elder believes alerting the demon by trying to retrieve it openly would be unwise, given the fortress's heavy guard. He suggests a stealthy approach to steal it without being detected. At this point, all eyes turn to Zing, who appears to be the designated thief. She feels guilty about having to steal again and breaking her oath. Kachin explains that Zing swore never to steal again as she could lose her life because of it. But the Elder reassures her, explaining that the oath of destiny she swore can only be fulfilled once so she won't face further consequences. Additionally, since the coolant core is an immortal treasure, recovering it cannot be considered theft. He also promises to share her suffering if anything goes wrong due to the oath. Although losing her sister is already a great pain, Ziying agrees to help her friends. She decides to infiltrate the building through the ventilation ducts, avoiding the guards and using her ring to open a small hatch, disabling two guards in the watch room. Ziying spots the boss's secretary on a screen and heads toward her. With a swift move, she pins the unsuspecting secretary against the wall to extract information about the coolant's location. The frightened secretary reveals that it's in the basement treasure room, but an access card is required to enter. She then discloses that the card is in her bag on the table.
taking advantage of a moment when Zine turns her head, the secretary breaks free, and the two women engage in combat, dodging each other's blows. Zine manages to win by immobilizing the woman against the wall with her webs. She checks the bag for the access card but can't find it. Zine threatens the secretary, who refuses to reveal its location even under the threat of death. Zing promises to do something much worse than death to her. Back in the shelter, the situation grows increasingly unstable. The tremors cause debris to fall, and panic ensues among the people. The flame demon adds to the destruction by hurling fireballs and demanding the Celestials to come out. Shaw realizes that if they don't stop him, the shelter will collapse even faster. Zhao Ba decides she will confront the demon, even though Kachin asks them to wait for Zing's return. But Zhao Ba isn't planning to wait for long. Sha reassures Kachin, saying Zhao Ba will stall the demon to buy time for Ziying, and he'll go to help her. Kachin and the elder are tasked with taking care of Jen. The little girl Kachin saved earlier asks why the Celestials are leaving, and he explains that they are going to fight the bad guys to help them. The little girl thinks they are very brave but becomes sad again when she wonders who will protect them, a concern that Kachin also recognizes. Meanwhile, back with Ziying, she has managed to extract the elevator code from the secretary. The secretary warns her that she might not come back alive. Using the elevator, Ziying reaches a large dark room where the core is located. As she approaches the core, she unknowingly triggers a motion sensor, setting off a loud alarm throughout the room. This also activates a large protective robot that drops from the ceiling. Zing acts quickly and manages to dodge it, realizing that things might not be so easy after all. In the city, people are fleeing in terror as flames rain down. They work to rescue the injured and seek shelter from the burning rocks. The flame demon continues his relentless search for the Celestials who are hiding within the city. In a flashback, the flame demon recalls how he met his wife when she thwarted a thief's attempt to steal on a train. They later fell in love and shared beautiful moments together. Eventually, they got married. Some months later, the news of the Demon King's invasion spreads. His wife worries about their city's safety, but he reassures his wife that it's a neutral zone protected by the Celestial Realm. But tragically, some days later, a meteor shower strikes and a massive explosion kills his wife as she is at their home. Back in the present, the lame demon faces the combined assault of Zhao Ba and Sha. He blocks their attacks and retaliates by hurling fireballs, but Sha manages to stop them with an ice spell. Zhao Ba continues her relentless barrage, but the demon skillfully deflects the energy projectiles she launches. The demon, seething with anger, calls them false deities, which confuses Sha. The demon keeps vowing to return the pain inflicted by the gods a hundredfold, unleashing a powerful stream of fire. Sha summons an ice barrier that barely holds against the attack before finally breaking. Unexpectedly, Kachin's golden staff descends from the sky, creating a protective dome around his friends. Kachin himself arrives, surprising the demon. The demon, however, is pleased to see a powerful human before him. Kachin implores the demon to stop, pointing out that innocent people in the city are suffering due to his actions. The demon suddenly realizes the suffering he's causing to innocent people and families. Kachin reminds him that continuing down this path will result in the city's complete destruction turning it into ruins, much like it was a hundred years ago. Kachin then asks the demon why he's acting this way. The demon shares a tragic story from his past through a flashback. In the past, he was severely injured and desperately searched for his wife amid the rubble. He finally finds her buried under a pile of rocks, but despite his best efforts, he cannot rescue her. Suddenly, a red energy orb appears, surrounds the man, and converts his deceased wife's body into energy, leaving only her ring. Back in the present, he reveals that since that moment, he believed his purpose was to seek revenge against the clan of the deities. He questions Kachin about whether he believes it was he who hurled the fire meteorite onto the city and suggests that Kachin inquires with his immortal friends about what truly transpired. Kachin turns to Zhao Ba and Sha, requesting an explanation. Sha recounts that a hundred years ago, during the war, the Demon King attempted to destroy the immortal palace with the fire meteorite. To protect the palace, they erected a protective barrier, which ended up altering the meteorite's trajectory, causing it to fall into the lower realm, eventually landing on the Fire City. Kachin is taken aback by this revelation. The Flame Demon continues to assert that the gods are hypocritical, claiming they pretend to want to save and protect people but are not afraid to sacrifice humans to save themselves. The demon's words deeply trouble Zhao Ba and Sha. Sha apologizes for their past mistake, but the demon isn't finished. He launches a fireball at Zhao Ba, 
Kachin remains motionless for a moment but reacts just in time to use the power of his staff, creating a golden barrier to shield Zhao Ba from the attack. The demon tells Kachin that he's on the wrong side, but Kachin responds by explaining that if the city were to fall into disaster again due to revenge, he would be no different from the hypocritical deities the demon wants to destroy. Even if he manages to defeat all the deities, it can't undo the past, and the hatred in his heart will only bring more tragedies to the city. Kachin encourages the demon to use his power to save the city and its people. These words deeply resonate with the demon, but his vengeful impulses transform him into a massive wolf-like monster. The demon shares his sworn oath to kill all the clans of deities for sacrificing his wife's soul, and delivers a powerful punch to Kachin. Despite blocking it with his staff, the force of the blow sends Kachin flying, crashing into a building. Meanwhile, Zing has already defeated the guardian robot with ease and heads toward the artifact. She tries to grab it with her threads, but they freeze upon contact with the core coolant, and a wave emanates from the device, confusing Zing. Back in the city, Kachin has survived the blow, using his staff for support against the building and creating a protective shield to lessen the impact. However, he falls to his knees from exhaustion. As the demon in its beastly form approaches him, he requests that Kachin surrender. But Kachin disregards the plea and, with great effort, manages to stand up, leaning on his staff. This enraged the creature, which is about to launch a massive fireball from its mouth but stops when it senses an energy surge from the core coolant. Both Kachin and his friends are relieved to see the energy surge from the core coolant, indicating that Zing has completed her part of the mission. This greatly enraged the demon, who launches a gigantic fireball, causing a massive explosion. He quickly leaves to confront Zhang. Zhao Ba and the Celestials are unharmed thanks to Kachin's protective barrier that blocks the attack. Although Zhao Ba is in pain and falls to her knees, Kachin insists on facing the demon to ensure the safety of others. Sha decides to assist Kachin and creates a teleportation spell, transporting him to where Zhang is. Zhao Ba, despite being a bit upset, understands the necessity of their actions and is reassured by Sha's words, knowing that Kachin saved them and can now save Zhang as well. In the core chamber, Zhang hides as one of the walls of the room is destroyed by a heavily armored demon. She witnesses the demon grabbing the core with his armored hand. At that moment, the flame demon beast appears, demanding that the armored demon release the stone. The armored demon is pleased that the flame demon appeared, saving him the trouble of searching. The two demons engage in a fierce battle, causing the room to shake and debris to fall. Zing is nearly crushed by a falling rock but manages to stay hidden. As the battle rages on, the first demon reveals that he seeks the part of the god of war inside the beast demon. He transforms into a minotaur and overpowers the flame beast, obtaining the spirit fragment from within. Kachin arrives, extending his staff to break the box holding the fragment and absorbing its power. The demon tries to attack Kachin with an axe but is saved by Zing, who carries him away. The demon realizes that he can't let go of Kachin's staff even after Kachin's release, so he decides to cut off his own arm to avoid being consumed by it. Next, he teleports away, leaving the area promising to return. However, the impending impact of the meteorite is still a threat to the city. The flame demon tells Kachin to break the core coolant and Kachin, with his staff, breaks the core coolant, unleashing a powerful ice wave that freezes everything in its path and cools the meteorite. It shatters in midair, falling back to the ground as snow. The flame demon, who once sought revenge, holds his wife's ring and laments not fulfilling his promise. In his final moments, he sees a vision of his wife's spirit, who comforts him for helping save the city before he passes away. Seeing the threat resolved, Kachin, exhausted, faints, and Zing catches him before he hits the ground. The next day, everything was sorted out in the Fire City, and the gang decided to head to another deserted area to find a super special river called the Shaxia River. This river is like magic, it can heal people's wounds. Zhao Ba tells Jen that it's the only thing that can make his injury better. Jen, even though he's hurt, acts tough and doesn't want to rest. But then, he realizes he's even more hurt than he thought. Zing tries to get him to take it easy by telling him she likes strong and brave guys, but it would be sad if he got even more hurt. Jen finally gives in and lies down with his head in Zing's lap. Now, Kachin starts paying attention to Shaw. He's acting all serious, and Kachin thanks him for helping Jen in the Fire City. But Shaw just says it's no big deal and goes to check something. As they get close to the next village, they notice it looks totally empty. Kachin thinks maybe it's like Fire City, deserted because of the fight between the gods and demons years ago. But Shaw says that's not it. Suddenly, the vehicle stops because of an energy problem, and Shaw takes charge to fix it. 
Right then, Jen talks to Zhao Ba about how Sha's been acting weird. Zhao Ba doesn't take it seriously, and Kachin agrees that Sha seems worried. Zhao Ba tells them the desert area has valuable stuff in the sand, and the city used to be bustling with lots of people. Sha's army was stationed there for a mission and Sha never wanted to return because of a tragic event, so they wouldn't be coming back there if it wasn't for the magical river. But when Zhao Ba turns around, she sees them goofing off, eating watermelon, and not listening. She gets upset because she thinks they're not taking the issue seriously, and says she won't tell them more about Sha. They try to guess the story coming up with their own weird theories, which makes Zhao Ba even angrier. Jen tells her that he thought immortals didn't like the human world, but it seems that Sha is also a man of character, so the brothers should support him. However, Zhao Ba tells him not to be so cocky. Jen then says he will talk to Sha to get him to share his feelings, and despite Zhao Ba's initial disagreement, she is convinced by Ziying that she let them talk it out with Sha. Jen goes to Sha and offers to help, but Sha seems a bit distant and says he doesn't need any help. Jen tells Sha he doesn't have to handle everything alone and that they're friends, so he can tell them anything. At some point, they think Sha wants to confide in them but Sha reveals that the ship's power crystal is broken, and that's why the vehicle can't move. He needs to get replacement crystals from an abandoned mine nearby. Jen suggests going with him, but Sha insists on going alone, reminding Jen that he's not fully healed, and the mine can be dangerous. Jen keeps pushing, and suddenly, Sha reacts coldly, pushing Jen's hand away and telling him to mind his own business, which surprises both brothers because Sha's not usually like that. Later on the ship, Kachin is worried because Sha hasn't come back yet, and he asks Zhao Ba if they can locate him. Jen interrupts and says Sha is a deity, so nothing can happen to him, but he also criticizes Sha. Kachin tries to make Jen understand that Sha is just trying to protect them by asking them not to come along. But Jen isn't listening and keeps saying negative things about Sha. This makes Zhao Ba scold him and tell him to be quiet if he doesn't know anything about Sha. This makes things awkward on the ship, and everyone goes back to what they were doing. Now, there's a flashback to when Sha was with his squad, trying to find some demons that were causing trouble in the area. They didn't have much information, so they had to be super careful. The squad included Sha, who was the captain, and four other people, a kid named Afu, a strong bald guy named Black, a short girl with white hair named Lily, and a young guy with black hair named Kiao. As they arrive at the mine and venture deeper inside, they come across a gruesome scene with blood but no bodies. The group debates whether to confront the demons directly and search for the missing miners, even though their mission orders instructed them to avoid conflict. Afu suggests leaving, but Sha insists that their mission is to investigate the underground mine, and they must be prepared for a fight if necessary. So, they descend further into the mine. Deep below, Sha's squad is surrounded by zombies, which turn out to be the missing miners. Their bullets can't stop these undead creatures. In a tight spot, they decide to make a run for it. Afu nearly gets bitten, but with the help of Black and Yao, they narrowly escape. Lily uses explosives to fend off the zombies, but one manages to sneak through and bite Black. He downplays his injury, and, with the support of his team, they retreat to a safe room, unaware that his spilled blood has triggered a mysterious spell. Sha informs them that he believes all the miners have transformed into these creatures. This terrifies Afu, as they are trapped underground with these monsters. Sha reassures him, mentioning a telephone nearby they can use to contact army headquarters. Afu disconnects a cable and connects it to a communicator. Through some clever coding, he establishes radio contact with headquarters, and reinforcements are on the way, lifting Lily's spirits. A while later, Yao, who is on watch duty at the door, notices an eerie silence. Afu thinks it's because the army has arrived. However, something unexpected pierces the wall and ends Afu, revealing itself as a corpse reaping beast. Meanwhile, Zhao Ba is narrating this story to the rest of the group, as they need to understand Sha's past. Jen recalls his father mentioning this terrifying creature from the demon realm that feeds on corpses and is immune to magic. Zhao Ba explains that it's a creature dwelling in the darkest corners of the demon realm. This puzzles Ziying, who wonders why such a creature would be in the mine. Zhao Ba mentions that after the war between gods and demons, all monsters were imprisoned by the immortals, and the passages to the demon realm were sealed, making it impossible for such monsters to roam freely. To learn more about what happened to Sha's group, Kachin asks for further details. Just as Zhao Ba is about to continue the story, the ship locates Sha's position inside the mine. Back in the mine, Sha discovers a peculiar sight, a large magic circle on the ground. This surprises him because it's a spell used to open a passage to the demon realm, activated with a blood sacrifice from the deity clan. 
The bite that Black suffered made this sacrifice possible. At that moment, Shaw realizes why the corpse reaping beast attacked them earlier, their presence allowed the sacrifice to happen. Suddenly, the corpse reaping beast reappears, and Shaw charges magic into his fists, creating two ice blades. Continuing with the flashback of the past, Shaw and his friend Kyo continue to battle the terrifying creature. But it injures Kyo. Shaw tries to heal his friend, but Kiao insists that Shaw should escape and complete the mission, as the others have fallen to the beast. Despite Kiao's pleas to Shaw to return to headquarters, Shaw refuses and confronts the creature. He tries to distract it with some attacks but is ultimately defeated by exhaustion. Realizing the futility of the fight, Shaw is about to be killed by the creature, but Kiao sacrifices himself to save Shaw. In the present day, Shaw wakes up in a surreal white space surrounded by his former teammates. He feels deep sorrow for not being able to protect them and believes he's unworthy of being their team captain. However, the illusions of his friends tell him otherwise, stating that he's the worthiest because he never abandoned them until the end. Shaw still regrets not being able to avenge them, but at that moment, Kyo appears and reminds Shaw of his mission, to uncover the truth behind the spell in the underground mine. Kiao urges him not to give up, for the sake of the friends he has now who will need him. Shaw hears his name and wakes up again, this time back in reality, with Kachin by his side. Kachin explains that they located his position through the ship and rushed there when they noticed something unusual. When Shaw gets up, he sees the rest of the group facing the beast, and despite Zhao Ba's cannon shots, the monster remains undeterred. Shaw asks Kachin to use his golden barrier to protect the others. Realizing Shaw's intention to sacrifice himself for his friends, Kachin tries to stop him. Shaw insists that he won't lose anyone important to him ever again. As the beast fights with the group, sending them all flying, Shaw approaches the monster and begins to cast a spell, instructing Kachin to activate the barrier. However, Kachin activates the protective barrier around Shaw as well, preventing him from sacrificing himself. Kachin explains that he doesn't want to lose any of his friends. He commands the staff to elongate, destroying the mountain above them and creating a hole in the roof that lets in sunlight. The creature, unable to withstand the light, disintegrates, and everyone is relieved to have emerged victorious. Before leaving, Shaw uses the pieces of mineral to create a dignified grave for his fallen former comrades. He promises to uncover the mystery of who created the spell so their souls can rest in peace. Shaw also vows to protect his new comrades with his own strength, just as his old comrades once protected him. They return to the ship to continue their journey. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.